Hey, well, once again, welcome. We're in part four of In God We Trust, and um, this has been, how many have enjoyed this series so far? If you're online, just say, uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, it's all about, and we can get the lights on in here, If it's all about reminding ourselves that in, again, this crazy time of political stress and, and, and pandemic and, and financial stress and e economic breakdown, like everything that's going on, that we do have one constant in life. Everything changes around us. The world changes. Things want to push us in different directions, but God never changes. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that will never change. God is stable. If there's anything in your life, if there's anything in our world, if there's anything that you need certainty about, is that God loves you. He doesn't change. He's here for you, and he's never going to leave you. Is that okay to say that this morning? I'm a little bit excited about this message because um, it's something that when we talk about uh, this particular topic, and, and by the way, it's called When Christians Get It Wrong, um, I love to talk about this because uh, I, I love to tell you when I get it wrong, and I love to point out when you get it wrong, too. No, it's not, not about that. I, I, I just, I really think that this is important for us to hear, and so I want to ask you, and I know it's a lot of stand-up, sit-down, but it's the best way, especially if you're online, to stay engaged. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand in honor of God's Word, and we're going to read John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then 14. And you're welcome to read along with us. Scripture says this, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, he was with God in the beginning. And, and if you want to read, let's, let's read together. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The world became, the word became flesh and made his dwelling upon us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. You may be seated. Jesus was full of what? Yeah, we can, we can give it up for God. That's, that's, that's powerful scripture there. Jesus was full of what two things? Grace and what? And truth. But the truth is, sometimes, as Christians, we aren't. All right, we're going to start throwing rocks right away, right? We're not always full of grace and truth. Sometimes we're full of too much grace, and sometimes we're full of too much truth, and an imbalance of either one could really mess us up or mess somebody else up. Would you agree? And, and I, will, I will explain that. But sometimes, and that's why we titled this, this message, When Christians Get It Wrong, we're going to get it right today. At least we're going to try to get it right. We're going to get better at getting it right today. Th this whole balance of grace and truth, you know, for um, for. So many years, our country um, was known as a Christian nation. How many, how many know this? And, and unfortunately, growing numbers of Americans have identified as what was called post-Christians. Um, not necessarily atheists, not necessarily people who don't believe in God at all or, or agnostic, but post-Christians, meaning that they have some connection to God. Maybe they grew up in church um, but don't really think God's important or grew up and believe in God but don't really focus on him. Um, but at some point didn't like what somebody said in a church or disagreed because culture said something and the church said something else and then ultimately have, are, are rejecting God, rebelling against God. That's happened quite a bit in our nation. In fact, post-Christians... Um, uh, uh, post-Christianity, if you will, is, is changing our culture. And I have a, um, a chart that I want to show you, some research that was done. Now, this is the top, I believe, 10, uh, uh, 10 post-Christian cities uh, in, the, in, the, in the world, Portland being number two, Providence, Rhode Island, Burlington, Springfield being number one. Um, and you could see the percentages there of people who would consider themselves post-Christian, meaning that they're, they're, 
Christianity isn't as important or they reject it to a, to a big degree that, that it's not, doesn't play a role. God doesn't play a role in their life. Does anybody want to take a guess at where Denver is on this list of 100? Does anybody know? 14. I didn't put the whole list on there. There's 100. It, you, it, it's small enough as it is to, to even see. But um, we're number 14. This was a, 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 te- a study done about three years ago in 2017, so still pretty fresh information. So it could be a little worse, could be hopefully a little bit better. But 48% three years ago of people that were talked to and, and, and surveyed here in the Denver area would say that Christianity, Christ, God isn't as important, doesn't play a role. I either reject or, or refuse or disagree with Christianity, and I'm going to live my life the way I feel like I want to live it. What do you think? That, that's, that's a tough place for us to be in. And as a church, we need to do our best to get it right because I can't help but think that what we've done and over the years and what we do or don't do can aid or contribute, if you will, to this number. And, 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 it's, and it's all about... Um, us understanding where we're at, to be really honest with where we're at. And I want you to be really honest with yourself today, as I will, and I, and I promise you, I, I'm, I will myself be honest with you. One of the, one of the biggest challenges um, for us, for church, for Christians who are doing our best, such as ourselves, to follow God, to seek God, is that having an imbalance or balancing one way or the other. Um, because here, here's the deal. Grace saves and truth frees. There's, there's, a, there's a, a, a big image there. Grace saves. How many would say, thank God for grace? But how many know when you understand the truth, it frees you? I get it. I get the truth that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, right? But we get to the truth through grace, and the problem is the next slide shows the two side by side. Sometimes we leave, we lean too far over into truth and we're like, this is who God is and this is right and this is wrong and this is what you should be doing. And you're like, wait, 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 I can't be perfect then. Or we lean too far over into grace and it's okay. Just, just, it's okay. You're dealing with that. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Like it's, yeah, just do what you want. God loves you no matter what. Like anybody, Right. We, we lean into two, one or the other, and one or the other extreme, just like in anything, could be unhealthy spiritually, just like in, in, in anything, even, even in nutrition, if you lean into too much of one food, it can hurt your body a little bit, or, or, or moderation would be, would be healthy, but too much of it would be too much, right? Truth. Some, some of us, again, on the truth side, we're, we're really heavy on it. And we would, we would look at people, we would look at the world, and we would say, the truth is, the world is going to hell, right? Or the truth is, they voted the wrong way, and I don't know what the heck is wrong with them. Or the truth is, what they do is complete. How could they call themselves a Christian with what they've been doing, or how they act, or what they live, or what, they were being, what they're wearing, right? Any, anybody? Anybody experience or maybe, and, and, and we don't have to do this. We don't even have to raise your hand just, just to just have fun with me today, right? Or on the opposite side, it's okay. It's okay. But I keep hurting them. It's okay. But I keep doing this. It's, it, don't worry about it. It's okay. God loves you no matter what. No, no, no balance to that. And here's the deal. And here's the problem with leaning into one way or the other. Um, I'll, I'll put this up on the screen. Truth without grace leads to what? So let's say it. Come on, help me out here. Truth without grace. There's a lot of us in here. Truth without grace leads to rebellion, right? When we are all about truth and we're just like, this is how God views this. This is God's way of doing things. This is how God intended you to live. This is how God, and, and there's no grace to that, then I'm going to rebel. I'm going to say, well, you know, that might be the truth, but I can't do it. So got to go, right? Anybody? 
Anybody experience that? Anybody? Um, Christians get it wrong really strict uh, uh, when, when there are kids potentially who, who leave, and I experienced this growing up, like the church that influenced us was, I would say, more truth-based than grace. And they would teach us what not to do. And they would teach us that you've got to do this, you've got to do this. I, I remember to this day, Brother D. His name was Brother D. D. Herrera was his, his last name. But they called him Brother D. And he would sit in the back. He had this big belly, right? Big, big, strong guy. Sit in the back like that. And there were more than, more than uh, a handful of times, Art, where he would get this mug, this, this coffee mug. And if me or my brothers or my friends at church were chewing gum, he would put it in front of me. Spit out your gum, boy. You don't chew gum in the house of the Lord. That, that's, that's, the, that's how I grew up. It was like, what? Like, I, I, I'm going to hell. Like, God, don't come back right now because I'm not right with you. The second problem is one, truth without grace leads to right. Grace, let's, let's do the second one. Grace without truth <laughs> leads to what? Relativism. Are you with me? Leads to what? Relativism. No such absolute truth, right? If, if everything is just okay, if everything is just God's going to forgive you and just kind of figure it out, then there's, and there's no absolute, like, here's the truth. My truth is your truth, or your truth is your truth. And it doesn't have to be my truth. No one, including God, right, could tell me how to live. That, that type of mentality. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. As long as you don't hurt anybody, it doesn't matter what I do. Have you heard that before? Oh, it matters. Can I just tell you right now, it matters if you're young and you think that what you do, it's your body, your life, you could do what you want, and it's not going to hurt anybody else, you're, you're dead wrong. I just got to tell you. You have a family. You have friends. You have brothers. You have sisters. You have uncles. You have aunts. You have grandparents that when you, met, when you do something really dumb, it hurts everybody. Can I just tell you that? Sorry if that's a little heavy for a Sunday morning, but it is the truth. It is the truth. And I'm getting to the age where I'm just going to just say it, right? Before I was just like, hey, be careful. You know, no, it's the truth. I'm getting old, right? I'm going to grow up my hair and it's all white now. And you're going to be like, all right, that's why he's saying that stuff like that. All right. But, <laughs> um, but it's common, right? It's common today. Uh, and, and what we need to do, what do we need to do? Like we need to battle and we need to find the balance between truth and grace. And it can't be just let's get a little Jesus and, and be happy and ignore everybody. Because unfortunately, especially during what we're dealing with right now, we can easily fall into that. And here's what I mean. Like we could easily just say, I'm just going to let everybody do what they want to do and, and ignore it and just get a little Jesus and, and open up my Bible, you know, verse once a day and, 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 and kind of stay in my own little, little world and just get enough of Jesus to, uh, to make me feel good but not enough to convict me or to help somebody who needs grace or not enough to help somebody who needs to hear the truth, who knows the grace but needs to hear the truth or somebody who knows the truth but needs grace. We, we need to, to do something. We need to do something. What, what is grace? Um, grace is charis. We, we, we've, it comes from the, Greek grace, uh, from the Greek word charis, and it's the undeserved kindness and I have, a, I have this up here, the undeserved kindness, favor, and goodwill of God. Grace is completely undeserved. The moment you think you deserve it, it's not grace anymore. It's by God's grace that we're saved. It's by his love that we're saved. It's by his mercy. That was, it's by his grace. It's, it's this undeserved uh, uh, um, favor and goodwill of God. If, in fact, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says this, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself, right? It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can what? 
so that no one could get a big head. No one could say, oh, it was all me. No one could say, I did it. I accomplished it. No, we're not good enough on our own. And in case you haven't realized that yet in your life, you need to understand that on our own, apart from God, we're, 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 we're just not good enough. We need to connect with our Savior. We need to connect with the God of the universe, the God that created us and has a purpose and a plan for us. And in John 1.14, we read it earlier. Um, I, I love this. Grace in Scripture always comes before the truth. Grace always comes before truth. And it's something that scholars can't prove, and it's, it's, but it, 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 it's something that we read and, 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 and in, the, in, in the Scripture. It leads with grace. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. Because you can't experience the truth without understanding God's grace. In other words, if, if somebody, if you're listening online and you don't know anything about God and you were to ask me, what does God say about this topic? And I were to just tell you the truth, and maybe you were living completely different from that truth, you'd be like, oh, don't know if I want to go to God, Right? But if we were to say, you know what? God has grace. We're broken. He loves you just the way you are. He invites you to be part of his family just the way you are. You don't have to change your behavior. You don't have to change where you're going, what you're doing. You just have to come and understand that you're forgiven, that you're loved exactly where you are. It's by his grace then we understand, oh, God loves me, but I'm, but I'm bad. But he loves you. But you don't know, but he loves you. But, but I can't get over, but he loves you. But I'm addicted to, he loves you. And when you realize that God has grace for us, we could settle into the relationship that he has, and then we're able to start understanding his truth, Right? So we understand that God loves you regardless. He knows you're imperfect and you always will be. And as we settle into that, to that, to his grace, we could start to understand, but here's what God would prefer that you do. Here's what God would, would, would like you to stop doing. And, and it's not because God is this, 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 this judge in the sky with the big gavel and, and, and the big sworded bat is going to beat you over the head. If you know it, it's because Everything has a purpose. You have a purpose. And we all had a design. We all had a reason for, for living and, and, and for being born. But it takes the entry, the doorway of grace to understand that God has a truth and that there's truth. Um, Romans 6, 1, because there's some people that would be on the other side, on the other side of this, and they would say, well, if grace if grace is that great, then, then I basically could just keep doing what I'm doing, and I'll be okay. Has anybody ever thought that or known somebody like that? Just, I'm okay. God, God loves me. And they refuse to do anything about it. Any, anybody else? Anybody know anybody like that? Maybe, maybe you've thought that. There's no conviction at all. Um, grace is a safe pa- place for people to belong um, before they believe or behave, but so so this grace covered all. Here, here's what Romans, here's what Paul said in Romans six one. He said, "What shall we say? What shall we say then? Should we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Truth. Here's the truth. By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer?" In, in, the, in the biblical times, people were like, if, if Paul, if grace is what you're saying, and it's unlimited, and it's undeserved, and it's free, and God gives it abundantly, then that means I could just go on living the way I want to live, and I'll be fine? Paul would say, no. I mean, if, if you understand grace, right, and, and you've understood that Jesus gave his life for you, He died, he suffered for you so that you could have the free gift of salvation saved by grace, right? 
then why in the world would you ever think that I'm just going to go do what I want because he forgave me and I'm good? Now, let me be clear. We have this idea that, um, or some have had the idea that we have to be perfect after we get saved, or we can't mess up or else it's that whole, no, 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 here's what it is. There's a difference between not caring about what I do and saying, oh, God loves me anyway, and I'm just going to do whatever I want to, and, and saying, God, I know you love me. I know you have grace. I'm still struggling, though, and, and I'm not perfect, and I have this. In, let me say that God, that's where God wants you. God, I, I love you. I believe in you. I accept your grace, but I, but I still have this issue. I still have this, this issue, and, and I want to illustrate this, this, this for you. Um, I, have, I have some chairs here and a mask. All right, we'll, we'll put that over there. Uh, I want you to tell me and, and decide and, and kind of think about different people representing different chairs. Let's say the person sitting in this chair is um, the, the stay-at-home parent, if you will, and they love God. And, and let's just say for the sake of everything, everybody here loves God. They love God, but they stay at home gossiping online and to their friends all day. And it's just like an addiction, right? You're like, man, I'm not telling them anything because that'll get out pretty quick, right? And then you've got somebody sitting in the chair here, loves God, realizes there's grace, but can't get over um, uh, smoking marijuana or, or, or watching pornography or doing something that they know is wrong and they're battling with it, some kind of addiction. And then you've got somebody here who's a workaholic and they just work, work, work because they love money. They love to have all the money they can. They want to buy everything, but they love God. Then you have some, somebody here that... Uh, that I have a hard time with, and they're very legalistic. And they're pointing the finger at everybody. And they're going online telling everybody how they're going to hell because of what they do or how they voted or what they look like or, or what they, how they live. But they love God. <laughs> You'd be like, do they really love God? No, they, they love God, right? And then you have the person who suffers with fear and anxiety. They love God, but they just, they're, they're afraid, all the time. They have anxiety. They, they, they can't get over it. They love God. Let me ask you a question, church, and those of you who are online, please answer this. Please, please type in, get ready to type. Which one of these people needs grace? All of them. And, and maybe I didn't name you in here, but I want you to put yourself in the category of one of these people that need grace, because I'll tell you, none of us are perfect. Not one of us are perfect. That's why we need grace. That deserves a little amen, I think, right? God, God, is, God is good. Um, the truth is this, that grace is what we all need. And what we need to understand is that truth isn't restrictive it actually frees us when we know the truth. The truth sets us free. We have to be willing, though, to, to, to accept and, and to try God out. For some of, our, 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 the, some, of, some of the generation that we live in now, because the thought that um, I should do what I want, feel what I want, live the way I want, is so prevalent that when there's a truth that God says that bumps up against them, they're like, nah, that, that's not right. God just wants to hold me down. God just wants to give me a rule. God just wants to tie me up. And what we don't understand is truth. Truth is designed to protect us. When God says, hey, in the, remember in the Garden of Eden? Hey, you can eat and do whatever you want. There's just one rule, and the one rule is basically so you know who's in charge. Think of it if you, and I've said this before, if you show up, you get hired at a place, 
and you, you go to work for the first time, Anthony, and you show up, and everybody's there to work, and you're like, all right, who do I report to? We don't have a boss. What time do I go on break? Whenever you want. Um, how long do I work? As long as you feel like it. Like, would that at all work out? It would not work out, right? There's got to be rules, and the rules keep us organized. The rules keep us paid. The rules keep us safe, right? If, if you have a pet, does anybody have a pet that they really love? How many have a fence, right? The fence isn't designed to restrict them. The fence is designed to keep them from jumping over so they don't get hit by a car. Yes? Or they don't bite somebody. It's so that they can have freedom in their yard running around, but they don't get killed jumping over the fence. That's, God's tr- that's why God has truth, right? That's why he wants us to understand the truth so we could be free to run in the yard and be safe to not cross the boundaries that we shouldn't. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. Jesus was full of both. I was going to say earlier, how many know somebody who's full of something, but that's like, this sounds weird, right? Jesus was full <laughs> full of grace and truth. And I'll tell you what, um, this, is, this is a struggle for all of us to find balance. And, and if I had to, and, and, I'll, and I'll set this here one more time, if I had to sit myself in a seat, I, I, w- I would sit right here in, in this one, and I would say growing, having grown up in a church where rules were more important than grace, um, it caused me to feel for many years of my Christian life to not, be good, not feel good enough because I wasn't doing the right thing. It also caused me to be very judgmental and legalistic in a lot of my perspective uh, of, of my upbringing in Christianity, that this isn't right they're wrong. I can't believe they would do this. They call themselves a Christian if they write, r- r- watch a rated R movie. How dare them? Chewing gum in church, right? Wearing that. They said a cuss word. Oh my God. They're the devil all the way, right? Like we, all these things, right? And, and for a lot of it, for, for a lot of my self-discovery, um, it's been me saying, God, I'm going to work really hard so that you would accept me because I want to be good for you. And, and God, over and over and over and over again, had to remind me, you're already accepted. You're already loved. I already have grace. And when we realize that, when we start to battle with the issues that we have, we start to find balance. And not only do we start to find balance, but we start to have grace and balance for the people that need our help. When, when you get to the point, and, and again, not, not like we've, none of us have arrived, we'll arrive when we get to heaven, right? But when you get to the point where you realize that <laughs> I'm never going to be perfect, God loves me, but I'm certainly going to seek after God so that I get better and I overcome some of these struggles. Then when you talk to that person or you see the person in one of these chairs, you could say, hey, they're not there yet either. And and I could have grace for the person who is gossiping about everybody. I could have grace for the person right here who is so legalistic and their point of view is like, you got to dress, eat, and, and walk a certain way or else you're not right with God. You say, you know what, I have, I have grace. And, and maybe you could have that conversation with them if God gives you that opportunity. But it's all about finding that balance of grace and truth. What do you think, church? Online, what do you think? Is, is God good or is God good, right? I'll answer that for you. Is God good or is he good? I think, I feel like he's good. And, and God is amazing. If you, let's stand and let's ask God um, to, to, 
insert this truth into our hearts. And if you don't mind bowing your head, Lord, we, we come before you, Father, right now, where we're so grateful for you. We're so grateful that we're saved by grace, Father. But we also are grateful, Father, that not only do you want to save us, but that's just the beginning. You want us to understand the truth of your word so that we grow, we become connected to you, we live better lives, we help more people, we get healthier spiritually and emotionally, Father. So, Lord, would you help us? As we're praying, for those of you who are watching online, if it's you're live now or watching a rebroadcast, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and that you're not too far away from him to save you, that you haven't gone so far off that he still doesn't love you right where you're at. And so whether you're struggling, whether you're, whether you're in pain, whether you feel like you're the worst person in the world, God would say in, through his grace that he loves you just like you are. And I want to tell you today that he, you can be saved, you could be set free, you could be born again. And God offers, that, uh, the, offers the gift of salvation. He came, he died for us. He was the perfect sacrifice that came down, born of the Virgin Mary, lived a perfect life, died for the sins of the world, rose again so that we could have new life. And he wants a relationship with you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to start that journey with you. Not forced, but by your choice. And so if that's you this morning, if you're watching online, if you're here and you want to accept Christ into your heart and begin that relationship with him to understanding that I'm saved by grace and he's going to teach me truths along the way, can we pray this prayer together? Dear Jesus, I come before you. I recognize I'm a sinner. I need a savior. Forgive me. Change me. I give you my heart. It's no longer mine. It's yours. Save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, you are saved. We believe that you have new life in Christ. You can go to eternalrock.church forward slash next and find out more about what it is to be um, a Christian. We have one song and then we're going to um, dismiss. So let's worship one final time.